Okay, so off of the back of looking for the problems. Creating the problems within the answer process. So we want to be the ones who are driving the initiative. And let's, ooh, that's an interesting situation we've got, you know. Let's take with this and we're still attacking the bishop. So creating a problem for the opponent. And just develop the knight, attacking the pawn, creating another problem for the opponent. And obviously now we're going to go and look in castle. So from the get-go we're looking at what can we do to create problems for our opponent. If we lose sight of the answer process we will get trapped into the thought process of just constantly attacking, attacking, attacking. This is why we've kept the problem within the answer process. So we'll castle, keep it nice and steady. So the opponent thinks that they're causing us a problem by attacking here, but we're going to give them a bit of an issue because the position that they're looking for, in my head, is not going to be the one that they're really going to benefit from. So we're going to attack the bishop with the support from our bishop here, the queen can't take the knight. So we're giving them a problem. They have to think about maneuvering, moving the bishop out of the way. I know what I will do uh, straight away I'll think oh yeah let's just create a problem for them and then I'll forget about all the hard work we put into the answer process which has got all sorts of things looking at our blind spots and um, looking at being able to counter attack effectively and looking strategically at um, position on the board which is key for us so you can look and go right yeah I'm creating a problem by attacking such pieces but if your position is not right, if we forget the mantra that we have for our candidate moves, um, it might be a threat on their piece, but the position might not be very good. Our pieces might not be working together. Okay, so where do we go from here? We want to build up a problem, but we want to build up a problem with good, solid position. Attacking the pawn. Gives them something to think about. Attacking the knight, again gives them something to think about. Should have probably gone here, because I would have been pinning through to the knight, so the queen would have had to do something. So that was a bit of a mistake on my part there, not talking it through. I knew I would do it, I knew I would do it. So I need to just rein in this problem situation and just keep with the answer, so long as we creating good initiatives, that would have been a better initiative because it had the x-ray through, so kicking myself there. Attack the knight. Potentially brings the queen here, potentially this, obviously it's a bit obvious, it's just going to move out of the way. So we'll capture, capture, lose the bishop here. Oh, we don't lose the bishop. I don't think they saw that we were losing the bishop there. But we are in a sense because this bishop now is on our rook. So if we move the bishop out of the way, then he'd take the rook. If we move the rook here, then the queen comes down and takes the bishop. 
So we've lost out on bad position play. Like we said right from the start, focusing on this problem thing really is going to cause me a bit of an issue. Maybe we don't bring it in. Yeah, because it's messed this up already. This isn't good. Piece for a piece? No, it's not even a piece for a piece because we lose tempo. But piece for a piece if we do this. Then it's getting the paw in there. Yeah, piece for a piece. Bishop for the rook. Right, I'm back in answer mode now. We've messed up on the, using the problem stuff. Bishop. I forgot that the queen was um, here. So it's not just us that makes mistakes.
Okay, so the opponent's actually resigned. Shall we take a look at the analysis on this one? Now losing there, so it's because we were focusing on the new concept of the problem, we totally messed up the move order of things, and we did explain it in the game. So that always happens when we're sort of introducing something new, and I think I'll just keep that one on the back burner. It is a good concept, it's just that it can create problem within our answer process. So we know that trying to go for the initiative basically just keep it as simple as possible using the answer process and really we're just trying to generate problems for the opponent so that we can keep and maintain initiative driving forward so in this game here from this point on we'll go through how we or the opponent let us drive forward problems against them because they were up in terms of material as you can see it's like plus 5.2 so they've got a rook on top of us so they're plus three at the minute so it's a rook and a pawn it looks like they're they're up so really there's no way that they can lose the bishop takes the pawn so they actually give us the bishop back so we didn't do anything special the opponent took this pawn here. They were in a lovely, lovely state, five, plus 5.1. And we didn't force them to take that pawn. Our queen is right here. Yep, so we didn't do anything special at all. If they hadn't have done that move, then they would have been quids in. They would have been, they would have won because they had more material on the board. But as we know, if you're playing humans, especially, you know, you, you, they do make mistakes. And it's these types of things that we train towards. So we can grab, but it's also seen that we can grab that piece. We're still material down, it's a plus one at the moment now. So that's a good thing for us. So now we have to look to find appropriate positions. Let's see if we did continue doing that type of thing. So we attacked the rook and then we brought the rook across mainly looking at this point here you know just to give them something to think about there's nothing major there at all you could have gone for the exchange if you wanted to but maybe not on that occasion because the queen would have been it wouldn't have been able to take that so it does give them a bit of a problem but they did spot that we were potentially looking to target this area. We weren't going to be bringing the bishop here anyway to target here. Um, did think, well, if he was going to come here, then bring the bishop back. But there wasn't anything meaty. It was just a matter of giving, them, giving the opponent things to think about. But they did move further across. So the idea with this rook move was to basically start touching onto the queen. And they bring the rook around and it's still straight minus 6.7. Wow, crikey. So they're looking to come around the back. So I'm thinking, well, let's give the king a bit of a flight square. And then, yes, as you can see, they're, they're fighting for this square here. So if they get the back ranker, the king doesn't have anywhere to go. So we can bring the bishop back, but it does drop a bit. Let's see, what's it saying? Rook e8. Well, it's basically saying just bring the rook back. What are you doing leaving it up there? Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay. But I did have sights of the bishop coming here. After I'd done the pawn move, I, thought I said I was tunnel visioned on bringing that back. So I didn't have any thoughts of bringing the rook back. So again, that's tunnel vision. Not thoroughly covering the blind spots, but it blocks the queen off. 
and they continue because their motor set to continue with their checks but really we can bounce that off and grab and grab and support the bishop so then the pawn pushes down then we can take a pawn looks to block our bishop looks for the exchange and at this point it's uh the opponent resigned i didn't really want to take but then i was thinking well two bishops against the rook might work but i might have to work too hard this is saying queen b6 check where where is that there so i was taking my time so i might have spotted that because i didn't really want to exchange i was thinking in one of the previous games where I traded down, you know, traded down the rooks and we had the knights um, and I think they had like a bishop and a knight or something like that and it was hard work you know, it was really hard work you having to slog through I think we eventually got an advantage but it's hard work and that's what was my mindset was here so I do think I would have eventually seen the check on the king putting a lot of thought through because I didn't want to exchange the queen what would have happened if I did take so obviously they take here and yeah minus two point or something mm. alright so the bishop obviously is not going to want to stay there probably bring it here blocking a bit get the bishop putting a check on but I'd rather leave the king on my back yeah too much he's got these two pawns here and everything yeah, I wouldn't have been happy with that so yeah, interesting game.